let me ask you this. Do you get excited whenever they launch a new iPhone? Because, well, I don't. But that's also the case whenever they launch a new generation CRV. It's hard to get excited about it, but there are many good reasons why this is still very popular in the market. Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, Vince here from Auto Industria, and what I have for you is the Honda CRV, the sixth generation, as well as cha cha music in the background because our neighbor is playing cha cha music for whatever reason. But yes, sixth generation CRV, they've had it since 1997 here in the Philippines. It's one of the most popular Hondas here in the country, or actually anywhere else in the world for that matter, because this is a compact SUV. You can't really call it compact anymore because it's been growing every, every year. And the fact that this sixth generation is also even bigger than the previous one, it's, al it's almost a midsize, I think, depending on how you would classify it. But still, the new vehicle is about 4.7 meters long, there are thereabouts. It's also wider, it's also longer, it's got a longer wheelbase for a more comfortable ride and a wider track for more space inside, particularly in the third row. Yes. This is a three-row SUV, meaning two, three, and two. And you can also consider it to be the flagship of the Honda line in the Philippines because we no longer get Accord, we no longer get uh, the Legend, we no longer get also the Honda Pilot. So this is the biggest Honda you can get right now. And it's very critical for Honda in the Philippines because everyone's banking on crossovers. That's why Honda has CRV, they have BRV, and they have HRV. WRV we don't have yet, hopefully soon now in terms of the look as you can see it sports the honda corporate look right there with the headlights and the leds and the black grille it all looks very good it even has the kick up right here that we're seeing in a lot of cars not just with honda but with a lot of cars they like to do this yeah that whatever you want to call that the smiling face so you see that with the type r you see with a lot, a lot of other models in the market now uh, some of the key comments here from the outside. You do have 18-inch wheels in this variant. This is the turbo all-wheel drive gasoline. But what Honda did was they moved the A-pillar a little bit further back. So the cabin starts a bit further back, I think, compared to before. That's going to make a big difference when it comes to the space. If there's one thing I want to make clear here is that Honda was being very conservative with the design of the vehicle. Now, you can see that by looking at the wheels. I mean, it is 18 inches, but when you look at it, it's actually pretty small considering the size of the body. But what's really important is that when you look at the tires, these are Michelin premises, uh, it's the amount of rubber sidewall that you have that should be a good thing when it comes to ride. I'll show you in a bit. Now, from that angle, you can see that Honda is pretty, pretty much conventional with the CRV. There are no fancy lines. I mean, you do have the cladding with the repeater there or the reflector there. And then you have this sliding down here. The doors, these open uh, like the clamshell style. There's no side pod-ish kind of thing going on there. So it looks very, very conventional uh, given what you expect from others. Roof rails right there with the mount points and a lot of ants. Somebody parked this under a tree. I'm going to get mad at Jam Jam, Jamil, you, huh? You parked it under a tree. Yeah, maybe there's some... Uh, anyways, but ants all over. Uh, there, are, there is no sunroof up here. Uh, so it's just a plain uh, you know, metal roof. Uh, what Honda really did, though, was with the monocoque. They reworked it to be stiffer than before. It should result in a better ride and a better drive. But doors, these are actually pretty wide. This is, again, a three-row crossover. So you want it to open a bit wide so you can get in and out. We'll show you or not show you what it's like getting in and out of this one. Uh, ventilated disc in front, solid disc in the back. Really, not much to talk about here with a CRV. Let's check the back. So here's where it gets a bit, I guess, not so interesting. It's, it's the back. I mean, it looks a bit plain to me. It does seem to appear like they've interpreted the, say, the design of the city in a larger platform, albeit with the, this kind of the L-shaped taillights that we've seen before. But of course, they've, they've spiced it up a little bit for the CRV. Rear wiper, spoiler, shark fin antenna over there, CRV emblem, all-wheel drive, uh, black lower bumper, which is good. I mean, at least if you're, you know, kind of scuff anything, you won't really worry about that too much. It does have the, the tailpipes down there. And yes, these are actually functional, even though it's mounted on the bumper, this. Uh, there is actually, there actually pipes sticking out of both of those, which is good. At least, you know, you can say it's not a fake tailpipe. 
to pop open the tailgate, press that button. This one is a motorized one, as you can see. And as you can tell, this is a three-row uh, crossover SUV. Hence, you have the space over here, uh, which is actually pretty good. It's about 13 inches over here. And you do have this cover, which is a fairly substantial cover, by the way. And then there's a spare tire here in, underneath. So I'll see if I can show you that, but right under there, uh, which is a full-size spare. To access that, you have to fold and tumble the third row. Now, speaking of folding the third row, once you do that, you have access to a space that is about 38 inches from here to there and about 41 inches wide, which is pretty good. And then you can fold down the middle row, which when you do, you get a space that goes up to here, which is about, uh, I think, 60 inches up to here from the back. And then 72 if you extend it all the way, you know, just be sure not to scuff the nice leather on this vehicle. So in terms of cargo space, it's actually very, I don't know, uh, voluminous would be the term I would use for this one, but still pretty respectable. Uh, now, let's go check out what's inside. So let's start this off with the rear seat of the CRV. It's actually quite nice. Uh, the cushioning is very good. You've got a center armrest here for this variant. Uh, and then down here, you've got AC vents right here for the back. Two USB-C ports, which is all well and good. Seat back pockets. Lots of knee room for me. And then when you actually sit down, you can see over the driver's headrest. I mean, depending on the height of the driver, of course. And you got a nice view all around. You're actually quite high up in this one, kind of like a theater style individual headrest there, but no uh, sunroof here like some of the other markets that actually get it. But what's interesting about the back seat, well, is when you try to get into the third row. And yes, this is a three row crossover. So for one, there are two ways to do it, right? Uh, the first one is you can fold, let's say fold it up and then fold this down, right? You can try to get in that way, but why would you want to when the CRV has a nice folding mechanism built in. So when you pull this tab here, it actually lifts up and then out of the way, giving you clearance for your shoes to get in and out. All right, I'm gonna try to get in here. Cut the camera. Brilliant as a system may be for getting in and out. Once you're actually in here, no, not really, not for me. I mean, I'm just five foot six or 168 cm. So getting in was easy, but uh, once you actually hear the space, uh, it's is weird because you've got uh, you, you've got to really wedge your feet underneath the front seat and uh, just in front of this uh, crossbar here. I think it's part of the chassis as well, so it's kind of it's kind of got a very specific space for your uh, shoes, which is again weird, but still the seat itself it's fairly comfortable. Uh, I've still got you know, half an inch uh, to the ceiling. Uh, you got, well, our, the headrest here. This can actually recline one more position back, uh, but th this is how I'd, I would prefer if I was here, not that I would choose to. Um, saving graces. Uh, you do have bottle, well, uh, holders on either side, which actually look a bit odd. Uh, there are grab handles on the C pillars, so it makes you know getting in and out a bit easier. Uh, you do have good visibility from back here, which is pretty cool. You do have a big window, like you can see all around. And the best part, is the AC vents. You have two for either side. Uh, you can control it, you know, on your, like from here in the back, there's a master switch in front. But still, this is not where I would be. I would be right there in front driving. So here's the front row of the Honda CRV. Now, if you want to start it, there are two ways. You can use the key right here, uh, which you can also do a remote start while you're walking to the car in the parking lot, or you can use the key card. Whichever way you go, you can keep this in your wallet so you don't have to bring the key around. You know, it saves you the extra bulk in your wallet. Now, once you do power it up, uh, it comes on very nicely. It's got a digital screen here with a dual binnacle style gauge. Uh, got all the readout for the usual stuff, you know, like fuel economy, uh, the advanced safety features. I'll show you in a bit. All that stuff, uh, tachometer on the left, speedometer on the right, uh, temperature on the far left, and fuel uh, meter on the far right. 
here in the middle, you've got this nice screen here just coming out from the dashboard. Looks very good. I mean, the response is pretty good. The clarity is pretty nice. Got your usual uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, it's got the Bluetooth, all that stuff, all the things you want to play around with with your vehicle. It's got it, including the navigation. But uh, let's see if this one actually pops up because I don't think it will. Ah, there you go. It does come with the actual maps. But normally here in the Philippines, we use Waze or we use Google Maps. So, you know, it just gives you more of the traffic, more of the layout that you want. It does have the physical audio uh, control knob here. Oh, very nice and tactile, similar to the other ones uh, in the Honda model range. Uh, your home button there, all that stuff. One thing I do want to point out right away is that uh, this one does come with uh, wireless Apple CarPlay. Now, as you can see, oh, where is that? Let me go back to the settings, uh, change devices. Now, it does, <laughs> what's up with the names of those phones? But uh, Jamil, he uses his iPhone. Uh, he does have uh, the wireless Apple CarPlay. But me, for Android Auto, no. It's just the regular wired. So if we want to use the Android Auto, I'll have to you know, use a cable right here and plug him to the USB-A, not the USB-C, which is, is you know, perfectly fine. It does have a wireless charging pad. But again, being that I have to use my Android on a wired system and then yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose. Right, let me just turn that off. So, as I go back to home, I go to Android Auto. All my apps are actually gonna be there, all well and good. Response is actually quite nice. And scrolling up in there, yeah, so, so should be no problem. You know all that stuff already. But the impression that the interior gives me uh, is one that is well built. That is something that that, that is made clear with the CRV. It looks and feels like a well made interior because you look at the gaps, you look how everything kind of like the steering wheel, the dashboard. I mean, this is soft touch, soft touch, soft touch. And then it's got nice, this nice wood panel. I mean, it's not real wood, but still, it does actually look nice. It doesn't look like the reddish wood that they used, you know, used to use back in the day that looked like really varnished plastic. Got the honeycomb thing going on here, uh, which is similar, if not the same, as the one in the Honda Civic with the air vents like neatly recessed there in the back so it looks nice and neat. So you have the louvers there in the middle or the yeah the actual veins there you can control up and down like that like an old school you know joystick uh, on the controller pad like an atari kind of thing uh, and then right below it you have your climate control uh, controls so it's basically a dual zone so individually you can you can have a warmer temperature here and a cooler temperature for the driver depending on how you prefer things uh, the usual stuff that not really much to talk about there uh, the tray down here, again, I mentioned USB-A, USB-C for charging only for the USB-C. And then you have the 12-volt outlet there. Now, the biggest change perhaps in this uh, generation of CRV, at least here in the Philippines, is right here. Uh, because in the previous generation, and even with the facelift, they went with a button thing, the PRND, and then, but, but it's all buttons. Uh, we always commented, we always felt that that was weird to have here in in. Uh, for driving because especially if you're making a three-point turn you know you have to drive and then you have to remember that you have to press it to go to reverse which is weird now right beside the lever we have the usual controls the econ the hill descent control uh the electronic parking brake with the auto brake hold not much really to see there i mean it's all pretty normal stuff and that's something we expect out of the crv for it to feel normal it's not really going to be wow exciting no 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 this is not that kind of car if you want if that's what you want you should be looking at a sports car so what is great about the crv is that i think they nailed the ergonomics right with this generation in the previous one i wasn't a huge fan of the way things were like for example uh in this steering wheel this is much better buttons only no touch sensitive controls in the previous one if if i remember correctly right they had an audio slider thing going on on the left side and if you're the type that, you know, like you sometimes rest your hand like that on the steering wheel on a long drive, you inadvertently max your volume or, you know, mute your volume because you're touching a touch-sensitive panel. That's gone. Only buttons here and a click wheel, like or at least a click roller, scroller thing. So you have this uh, roller here that cycles through the views there and another one here that cycles through the views on the left side. You can see it right there. So depending on what you want to access, you can do it with his uh, click wheels. Now, when you do actually look at it, 
maybe this might not be the best idea. Maybe you can just set it somewhere else. But still, if that's what they're going for, fine. But you have your uh, audio controls on the left and then your voice command here. Yeah, I'm not going to use that one now. Uh, let me cancel that. On the right side, you have your controls for the ADAS, or as Honda calls it, sensing. So you have your, ad uh, uh, your adaptive cruise control. So that's one. It's got the low speed follow, traffic jam assist, uh, all that kind of stuff. Lane keep. You can set the distance to the vehicle ahead by cycling through here. Now, well, let me try to activate that. See? Now, with, with the adaptive cruise control active, you press that one. And then you, you can set your speed. Well, can't set it now, but maybe we'll show it later when we're on the road. And then you can set the distance of the vehicle ahead by looking up there. Uh, so it's actually all well and good what they do here. They've kind of, they've been doing this system for a while. So we're not really expecting anything too different. So it's something to get, you know, like if you're familiar with the Civic, this is going to feel very, very similar. Now, what else can I say? Um, it just feels and looks good. They have controls here for your boot. You have controls for the... Uh, level of the headlamp depending on where you want the beam to go but all in all this is not a vehicle that is like i said meant to excite you this is just a vehicle meant to work and that's what i mean when i say this is like the iphone of uh, crossovers you know as, as the iphone goes from one generation to another you don't really get excited anymore you know you kind of know what to expect they just make it a little bit better here a little bit better there sometimes they go too far like i said with the what was that <laughs> the shift lever controls you know that one so they, they they throttled it back to the lever type which i much prefer now cup holders here tray here center console here you got well nothing really there there's no charging port here i think there's should be one here in the back somewhere 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 there but but really it's normal crv stuff and that is what you expect now does it drive better well let's find out So let's show you what's under the hood of the CRV. What I like here is that I, I, I love it when the car comes with hood dampers. I mean, it just makes it easier, particularly for us who have to do these kinds of shoots. Now, powering this is a 1.5 liter gasoline turbo direct injection VTEC engine. Uh, it, meaning it's basically the same as the one you would find in the Honda Accord, which we don't have anymore, or the Honda Civic RS, uh, the, the turbo version of that one. Now, this vehicle, uh, it comes with 190 PS, which is more than the Civic and 240 Newton meters of torque. What makes this unique, though, is that it, well, it does have a CVT, but it also has a real-time four-wheel drive system, all-wheel drive system, meaning it can send uh, torque to the rear wheels, I think, up to 50% to be able to give you more traction, particularly in slippery roads. It's not meant for off-roading. It's not, it's not that kind of... SUV, it's a crossover, meaning primarily for the road, and then engages the all-wheel drive whenever it's needed to keep you safe on the road. That is actually the key thing here, safety. That's why they outfitted with all kinds of safety features, with sensing and all that stuff. More on that in a little bit. Now, uh, some of the things to discuss here. Uh, the intake is actually right up here. It's shrouded by this when you close the hood. It's uh, not a very neat engine bay. It's a bit busy. So, yeah, it would be nice if they had some kind of, I don't know, premium covering to make it look nice. I mean, they are charging premium prices for CRV now, so might as well, right? So it's actually been a while since I've done a car review here. I've been doing a bit of traveling, lots of events, motor shows, mobility shows, and a couple launches abroad. So nice to finally get settled back in. I do have a little bit of a cold from the cold weather uh, out there, so I'm gonna sound different. You know, I mean, not like Eric, you know, Eric has a deep voice. I'm a DJ Eric voice. No, I don't have that voice, unfortunately. The best way to describe this car, uneventful. And I mean that in a good way, because being uneventful, that's what you want. That's what most customers want out of a CRV. They don't want the, the drama of uh, trying to be sporty. Uh, they don't want like the wallow. They don't want uh, all these things to make, for it to feel basic. This feels proper for the expected CRV customer. Someone who wants a comfortable runaround vehicle, runabout vehicle, hence the name. Uh, you want the technology to deliver. 
and of course you want the efficiency uh, but in terms of efficiency on the highway we're getting really good numbers i mean being a 1.5 liter turbo uh, even with all-wheel drive system we're doing around 18.3 which is amazing for something of this size mind you this is still a fairly heavy vehicle at 1750 ish uh, kilos. Uh, I'll double check that number. Uh, and it is a seven seater. And granted, I'm still alone in the car. So you'll have to factor in that the fuel economy will drop once you put people inside or cargo. Uh, in the city, however, that's where it kind of shows the weakness of having a small 1.5 liter because being that you have to rev it, it has to rev a little bit more to be able to get the same amount of weight moving. Well, you end up with a fuel economy figure somewhere around 7.5 7 kilometers per liter. Average speed of around 16 kilometers per hour. So traffic with a small engine, not a very good combination. If you're just idling, it's okay. But if you have to actually start moving, that's where it shows its weakness. And given that, again, all-wheel drive is a bit more weight, yeah, that's just to be expected. Uh, the eHev, we will drive that very, very soon. So uh, hopefully that one, I mean, it will definitely get much better numbers than this. Uh, but as it stands, yeah, around 7.5. You can probably get 8 if you're being frugal. But again, once you put, let's say, 3 or 4 people in, in the vehicle, that's all going to change. Now, like I said, comfortable runabout. Let's see how it deals with the bumps here. I'm purposely, I'm purposely driving on the rougher bits. So I'm, I'm not avoiding potholes. I mean, everyone drives, they, they avoid potholes. For testing cars, I don't. I deliberately run them over, see what see what happens, see if you get any crashiness. Uh, most of the bad stuff on EDSA, it's perfectly fine. I mean, most of the you know the regular undulations, the patches you would encounter in EDSA, this is superbly comfortable. You compare it to let's say a CX-5, and the CX-5, uh, given that it's it's uh, you know engineered and designed to deliver a more sporty drive. The comfort is going to be the sacrifice on a road like this. Uh, and then you have the RAV4. The RAV4, they tried to make it look more, let's say, tall, off-roady. It doesn't feel as uh, nice when you're, you know, when you're trying to corner. I mean, not here on Edsa, but when you're trying to corner on the, in the mountains. This one is kind of a good balance between the two. I mean, like right now, it's doing a good job absorbing those bumps. That If you watch some of my other videos uh, driving around here, uh, you'll notice you know how much the vehicle moves how much the horizon moves relative to the what you're seeing out the window in this one managing it very well and that is what you want it's a combination of the chassis uh, because the chassis or at least the monocoque it's stiffer than before by about 15 percent maybe you know, depending on how that comes into play together with the suspension what you end up with is a smoother ride overall which is what a crv customer absolutely wants they want something no frills when it comes to driving around you don't feel anything just cruise along and it's all good if you want power this one does have it i mean it does have 190 ps so which is actually pretty good I mean, it's more than the honda civic uh that's always a good thing i mean you want more power in a bigger vehicle and a bigger heavier vehicle in terms of torque it does have 240 so in terms of numbers uh, 240 might not seem like a lot for something like this because you do want more torque that's why that's why the diesel was popular here in the Philippines, the diesel uh, 1.6, which we kind of miss, but understandably, you know, everyone's phasing out diesels. So uh, that's that's going to be something to keep in mind moving forward. Uh, but what's what, what we'll really miss about diesel is the torque, you know, and that's something you could really use in this one. Even compared to the 1.5 liter turbos from other manufacturers, this one is still a bit down on torque. I mean, Hondas in the past have always tuned to be a little bit uh, to have a bit more power uh, compared to you know, relative to torque compared to the others so uh, they, they like to tune it that way like remember the b16s before there wasn't much torque on the low end it's really more about the the top end uh, power that they like to work on this one is kind of similar which is you know unusual to say that's like, like uh, they're they're decades apart uh, but still the uh, honda's uh, development seems to have that that kind of philosophy with the uh, with the way they tune the power band and the torque bands of their engines this one no different uh, but still i like it i like the way it behaves in a vehicle like this even though the city fuel economy leaves a bit to be desired but that's really the thing about the crv it's not so much about desire it it's more about delivering what customers actually need 
on a daily basis. I think desire is the most important word here because when you look at it, when you sit in it, when you drive it, it doesn't feel desirable. Like only when you really drive it every day do you realize that, okay, I think Honda is doing something good here. It's not exactly flashy. It's not really going to win you. It's not really going to kind of elicit oohs and ahs. It just works. Like I said, iPhone. But let's go back to the warehouse to discuss that a little bit more. There are many people out there who are going to say that the CRV is going to be a generic vehicle to drive. In many ways, that is actually true. Because the CRV, a lot of the things about it, they don't really stand out. But that is actually not what Honda is all about. When they say Honda stands out, it's because it's reliable, it's comfortable, it is stylish, and it just drives well. When you look at, let's say, uh, your player profile for, let's say, your favorite online RPG or whatever shooter game. You have all the characteristics right there in the middle balanced out perfectly. That is what the CRV is. It gives you a balance of everything you want and need in an everyday family crossover SUV. Seven seats, good style, nice drive, comfortable, all the features that you need. The only thing I would really want to improve is the engine because the 1.5 liter VTEC turbo, well, maybe it's a bit overmatched for something like this or undermatched whatever the case it's not really underpowered what i'm saying here is that when you're dealing with low speed driving and also when you have more passengers in the vehicle it might have a tough time in low speeds at higher speeds it's not going to matter that much but time will tell how it does the only real thing here though the price because the crv starts at 2.1 million goes up to well even more for the hybrid this one is 2.28 million now, I don't have to tell you that at that price range, there's already a lot bigger SUVs that you can get, particularly PPVs. But Honda doesn't care. Honda knows what they've got with the CRV. It's a comfortable run around, run about <laughs> vehicle that you can really enjoy every day. So let me know in the comments below what you think about the CRV. Too pricey, underpowered, is it really good? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And please test drive it to see if it fits you. For me right now, Kailangan pagalita sa jam jam, ang dami lang gam. Jam jam.